And that's not good? Not good. Okay. He needs a nurse. Hi, Nick. Tim Reynolds with the AP. Down here. Oh, hi, Tim. Um, a, a disappointing night in general, but just how disappointing was it to come out then just have them set the tone with that 9 nothing. I know it was just a couple of minutes, but it just seemed like when you start playing uphill against that team, that's not really not really a recipe for success, obviously. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I think, um, again, um, you know, we... we you know, you got your you got your coverages and your and your things you're going to do at the beginning, and we just we just missed them early, right? We were just a a step too slow on on just about everything, and I thought we, um, you know, I talked about before the game how important shot contesting was, and I just didn't think we we settled in with some space and gave them confidence early, and um, you know, you just can't do that. I mean, we we didn't we didn't you know do either thing very well tonight. I mean, we didn't do much much well tonight, obviously, at the way the game went. Nick, Dan Winky, Los Angeles Times. You, yes, uh, before game one, you had mentioned Ilya Sova as a guy that can make sort of winning plays. How big of a, a thumbprint did he have on the game today? Well, I thought there's, he, was, he was very good, right? He, he, he stepped up and made a bunch of shots. He, he um, took a couple charges, um, but he wasn't the only one off the bench. I thought their, their bench guys came in and really, um, you know, were, were when we kind of clawed back, what, bad start we kind of got to like 14 9 right away and and uh, then those guys came in and really took off i think yeah first you know 17 13 14 that's i see that's 44 okay off the bench that's pretty good right and and that's um brogdon again i thought had a great start to his game um and obviously we had a hard time our, we, we weren't nearly as good on Giannis tonight he was he was in the paint with a, a little too much force uh more than we'd like tonight uh, Michael Lee with the athletic uh, what are you hoping that a change of scenery can do uh, based on just how this result came you take you're fighting uphill and never could break through yeah I mean I think um, you know we got we got a hope that uh, I mean we, we didn't play very well tonight and uh, uh, we, we did play pretty well in game one um, you know and they've they've done what you know they're supposed to do and protect their home court and we've got to go now do the same and and get ourselves you know back in the series um but it's got to be more of an effort like like game one than than tonight because again we were we were just uphill for almost three quarters tonight yeah nick Doug smith the Toronto start speaking of that start where you guys have always seemed to answer calls and respond with effort were you surprised or mystified why it didn't seem to be there from the start tonight um, I was, I, you know, I'm always surprised, Doug, when you don't when you don't start the game a little bit better, right? Especially you you know that they're at home and they're going to come out with an extra, you know, pep in their step, and and you know we we all we talk about that a lot, like hey, you know you gotta we gotta really focus on getting our defense set up at the start because it's going to be extra fast, you know they're going to be coming extra fast with the with the um, you know home court and the excitement and the energy that everybody has to start the game, and. Um, we, we, you know, we just didn't do a good enough job of getting ourselves set up. And, and we just, uh, again, I think, I mean, I got to look at it, but again, what it felt like to me and what I was telling them in the timeouts is we got to press up more on the shooters, right? We were, we were uh, I don't know, I can think of one. We, we went zone one time and got a stop, and we came down the next time, and, and it was late in the clock, and um, Meritich had one in the corner, and Mark went out and contested him. It was a good contest, but it wasn't. A full out contest, and 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 the, and you know we know we know we know the level of contest is going to affect these shots or not, and if you don't go with everything you got and jump high and and really try to you know let them know you're you know you're right pressed up against them, then the, the chances of them going in are pretty good. And I thought, not 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 picking on Mark, I thought there was there was several around the court where we were kind of there, but it just wasn't enough. Right, and and I was continually asking us to press up harder into bodies and make them bounce and do something else other than just shoot over a, a slightly contested three. <clears throat> Coach Sopan, Deb with the New York Times. Uh, I, I was wondering uh, in the third quarter, you guys cut it to thirteen uh, near the end. You guys has a little had a little momentum there. Is there anything, especially particularly in that stretch run? Is there anything that you saw tonight that you liked that you can take with you going into Game Three? Well, yeah, I mean, I think. Um, Again, going back to some keys to our series is is we've got to continue to work, you know, the offense for for shots, right? And again, um, you know, I sound like a broken record up here, but we had our share of wide open shots that could have that could have, uh, you know, at least 
um, stymied a little bit of the of the you know breakout in the score. Um, but we got to make sure we continue to work for them. But but listen, I thought again we were just we just weren't um, quite physical enough. Right, we were we weren't getting our, our screens set good enough. Uh, we weren't getting them off their screens good enough as well. Um, and we, we're going to have to be better, or they're just going to they're just going to look bigger than stronger than we are. And, and I don't necessarily think that's the case. We got to play a little tougher. <clears throat> Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Start. Nick, Mark got a bunch of shots early. Danny got a bunch. Uh, those are guys you kind of wanted to get going. Was that a did that just happen, or was that a concerted effort to get them touches? And how? Difficult is it when those guys aren't going for you? Well, it, it made it pretty difficult, right? And um, you know, again, some of that's designed, and some of it's happening. Again, the way they're playing, especially you know, with Mark, you know, you know, they're they're sending Lopez to the to the paint or to the rim all the time. So Mark's gonna have his, sh and um, I don't know, geez. Uh, I feel bad for him. I mean, most of those went in and out. You know, I mean, it's like he's a really good player. It's a really good scorer. And he was taking good sh shots, and he just couldn't buy one, right? So, and, I, you know, I even said it the first time out. I think he was about one for five or six at the first time out. And I said, we got to get him a bucket. Let's, let's go to him. And let's get him a bucket, you know, and maybe we could kind of get him to see one go in. And, and you know, again, they were good shots. Um and but to answer your question, it makes it tough because we're taking what's there, with guys that you know. Danny's a great shooter, and Mark's a, a scorer, and those are guys that we need to to step in and play. And they will, they will. Eric named the athletic uh, a week ago. Brad Stevens had sat in that seat and said, "What makes playing the Bucks so hard is that every possession, both offense and defense, they make you work." I'm curious what you think of that assessment <clears> through two games and just how hard it can be if you know you do cut it to 13 and you know they're still going to give it to you that next possession. Yeah, it it is it is difficult, and I think um, you know you're you're well, you know you get that thing. We got that thing to 13, and I think we had a. A timeout even in our ball and Kyle made a hard driving layup I think that you know he, he thought he got knocked to the side and threw it off the side of the backboard and then the next time down Kawhi got in a in a little tussle but again if you're if you're gonna not get a good shot or turn it over they're gonna put some pressure on you right and and that is you know I think they they took it right to 19 it was I think it might have been two possessions of back-to-back of -back threes or something or maybe an and one or something so you know, you did a lot of work to cut that thing in there, and it's kind of gone in a couple possessions. And I can, I can, you know, they do, they do a good job of of playing pace basketball and aggressive style of play, both ends. Kaper okay, TSN coach, can you talk about Norm Powell's performance tonight? You get twenty five solid minutes, yep. six of nine from the floor. It's something that we've really needed throughout the postseason that you saw tonight. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good to see Norm. I, I'd. Uh, you know, planned on using him a lot more in the rotation. I think he fits in this series a little bit more with his speed and strength and athleticism, his ability to take it off the bounce. Um, you know, we're going to need that. So it was good to get him going. And, and uh, I, would, I would imagine going forward, he'll be a critical part of the series for our rotation. <clears throat> okay, thanks a lot. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Nick Nurse talking about, you know, the game plan kind of maybe not working out the way that they thought. The Bucks out toughed them a little bit. Uh, it helps when you have this guy in Giannis. Oh my you get one miss, uh, yeah. That's the way you start off the game. That is the definition of bully ball. Just throw it off the back of the <laughs> backboard to yourself and dunk it. Come on, Raptors, what are you doing? Watch this, uh, Giannis, and how quick are they ahead? Trying to find everybody, middle Dang. team. Don't wait. Five of eight, efficient from the floor, played good D. Great pass. Uh, Marcus Gasol, not as much good. A lot of turnovers, Look at only this five thing. rebounds, Look at one of nine from the floor. Oh, 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 moving through oh. London with the Euro step and then finish like that. Oh, I love it. Love, I love it. In the half for Giannis. More defense to offense and the others involved. I thought George Hill was going to put him in the basket. He, uh, he looked like he was, he was going to try him for a second. Can, can we find out why Ersan Silva plays on so many teams? He plays well on all these teams. 7 of 11 from the floor. There's Malcolm. Malcolm Brogdon. Lopez didn't have to have a big night. Veritich helped out. He was very good at 15. Added six rebounds as well. Miritich, Brogdon, Ilyasova, Smitty, 42 points in the first half. Unbelievable. There's Giannis. 
I mean, P. Wood, he is just looking at guys, squaring them up, and saying, I'm coming right through you. And then every once in a while, he'll try to go around you. Bucks led by as many as 28. Kawhi trying to get him back in, and he had 31. The flip in from the free throw line and the foul. He hit the flip in from the free throw line and the foul. He hit the extra bucket. 15 was the lead. But then more trouble. While Toronto was Great forced pass. to have it turned over, B. Wood, that's one of six steals for the Bucks. The Bucks had 27 assists and only turned it over seven times. Well, that's a recipe for success normally. If you get a lot of turnovers and you, then you don't give it up the other way, normally you win those basketball games. And credit, look, even though he did not really play well or shoot well again, Eric Bledsoe, seven assists, no turnovers. Yeah, but I, I still think there's another level he can get to offensively. Yes. And Giannis, what a play right here. And one taking the bump off the glass. Inside, there's just nothing anybody can do with a one-on-one. -on -one. Not right now. Nothing anybody can do with a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a strict power game. Everything is to the best. They're getting bullied right now. Bully Physically ball. Getting bullied. Uh, no, does not get bullied. Uh, Coach Bud, Bucks up 2-0. We played on both ends of the court uh, in the first half, um, you know, is what we're trying to, you know, get to. Um, I think defensively, 39-point quarter, I think, and it just fuels our offense. And, um, you know, to come out and start um, game two with that kind of uh, effort on both ends of the court, it's what you're looking for. I think a hiccup for us in the third quarter, we got to be better. Um, but, you know, I think we righted the ship and able to, uh, you know, finish the game. So, um you know, we just got to keep working, keep thinking about getting better. But uh, Tim Reynolds with the AP, to, to elaborate on the start a, a little bit, the building's obviously very electric as it's been for you guys all year. When Giannis starts the game with a dunk, a block, and another dunk all in like the first 45 seconds, can you script a better way to get your team and this building going? It's, you know, to script those first three possessions. And the block shot to me is the one that stands out. You know, I think when Giannis is active, active and, and, you know, protecting the paint, protecting the rim, and, um, you know, he plays so hard. He just, you know, he's, he lays it all on the rim. And, um, you know, he plays so hard. He just, you know, he's, he lays it all on the rim. Um, I think everybody fed off of Giannis and how he started the game. Nico obviously had a good start. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's how you want to come into a game, too, or how you want to start a game, too. Came in with the pick and roll, Bud Ersan tonight obviously uh, had, had a strong performance. During the second quarter when the game was still in the balance, he really sort of took over. What, what did you see from, from Ersan tonight? Yeah, I mean, he was fabulous. You know, it was, you know, I think clearly his best game of the year and um, in a big moment for Ersan to step up. Uh, he's such a pro, you know. Um, we've been together for a few years now. It's just... You know, I have so much confidence and faith and trust in him and, um, you know, his tough shots and everything he does defensively. It's just And the whole bench, you know, you look at, you look at uh, George and Malcolm and just the production we're getting from our bench. Uh, you know, and I think Pat does a lot of things that, you know, help us win too. So I think the bench continues to be a real strength for us and Irsan just, you know, was off the charts tonight. Well, Cardinal Torres, uh, we're seeing Journal Times Eric has seemed to be struggling in these first two games. Tell me what you say to him to help him get his confidence back. I think Eric is confident. You know, he's just got to keep shooting, keep playing. Um, the things he does for us defensively, I think he had seven assists tonight. Uh, and I think there's so much more to the sport than just, you know, scoring and or making shots. And, of course, every time he shoots it, I want it to go in. But there's so many things that Eric Bledsoe is doing for us that's positive, that's helping us. You know, we're winning. We're up 2-0 in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Bled's a huge part of that. So he's confident. He's ready to go. And, um, you know, we'll just tell him, keep shooting, keep playing, keep doing what he's been doing. Eric, name the athletic. But they cut it down to 13 there. You guys get the timeout, get a stop. And then I think it goes Malcolm Bucket, Malcolm to George, Malcolm to George. Just how big were those two for you guys specifically off the bench? Yeah, that little stretch, you know, I think we've had a couple spurts, you know, including game one late where, you know, we're able to get a stop and then we're able to get out and play quick in transition. And, you know, tonight it was George that was kind of the recipient of it. You know, Malcolm got the dunk the other night. Um, you know, those 
those are what we're looking for. The more of those we can get, it's, it's hard to score on anybody in the playoffs in the half court. So if we can get out and run and, and get those easy ones, but that stretch. Um, you know, we weren't great in the third quarter. So, you know, the you know, opportunity for us to look at it, see how we can get better. But that stretch uh, in transition was really good. Gabe Stoltz, BrewHoop.com, sort of just dovetailing off that game one. Toronto really contained George, holding him scoreless and 13 off the bench tonight. Just between these two games, what did you see as the biggest difference for him? Uh, you know, George was aggressive tonight. I think, you know, he got a couple layups. You know, it's always good when you get a couple layups. Just like the other night, Brooke got a few layups and, you know, got some putbacks and things like that. It just builds your confidence. But... George had played at such a high level for four or five straight games. I mean, he was, you know, just a, he was so important and so good in the Boston series. I think he just, you know, he didn't have his best game in game one, but, you know, I think his mentality coming into game two tonight was great. And, you know, I think it, it uh, carried over to the court and, um, you know, he was very good along with the other guys. Uh, ben Steele, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. But you guys uh, forced the Raptors into a lot of long twos, contested jump shots tonight. What were you guys doing better defensively in this game? Um, you know, I, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, I thought we got better in game one towards the end. The fourth quarter, our defense got better. And I think some of that carried over into the first half. There was, a, you know, you get a little bit of a rhythm. Um, our people, our guards, you know, on the ball, taking individual pride, doing what we need them to do, and then the activity from the bigs we've been talking a lot about. Just all that, you know, kind of working in concert, um, you know, just making every shot they take tough, whether it's a three, a two, in the paint, no matter where it is, we want them taking tough shots. Cody Grant, WOZN Radio. It seemed like Nico finally found a rhythm offensively, especially in that first half, but a lot of times his defense goes unnoticed, getting his hands in the passing lanes, guarding smaller guards like Danny Green. Just how big is he defensively for you guys? Yeah, it's been great. You know, I think, you know, it's been a theme now for, you know, a few games or, you know, coming off the last series now to this one. I think Nico's, I don't know what the right word is, but I think he's just taking a lot of pride in showing that he can guard different positions and guard, you know, wings and shooters and chase guys and, uh, you know, he's doing little things in transition, getting back, showing crowds, finding shooters. Just really, and he's, he's, you know, just got like an edge to him um, that I think's been good for our team, and we need him to continue to do that. Greg Matzik and WTMJ. Bud, can you put into words, just given your experience, how challenging is it for a guy to come back into a playoff situation like Malcolm has, have it physically, mentally, from a conditioning standpoint? And, and really just fit right back into where he left off. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I feel fortunate to have been around a lot of good teams, and I, I can't think of a guy that's, you know, emerged in, a you know, the second round in a game, I think, four, four and five, and now into one and two that's come back and almost picked up right where he left off. You know, he was, he was so good for us all year, 90-50-40, and does so many things, and... I think, you know, certainly from my perspective, what he's been able to do, I, I just thought, you know, if we could just get him back going and he could, you know, I, I just, he's exceeded all of our expectations and he's, he's done it all year. So, and he's such a pro, I, I guess we should, uh, this is what we expect from Malcolm. Coach, Vince Goodwill from Yahoo Sports right here. Uh, when you look up and down this roster, so many guys that can dribble, pass and shoot, is that kind of what you envision when you're looking at the rotation and how difficult is that for other teams to game plan and guard against? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we want guys that are basketball players that, you know, have high IQs that can do, you know, like you said, dribble, pass, shoot, you know, can make reads, make decisions. And, um, you know, we try and, you know, develop them. We try and empower them. We try and play a way where they all feel like they can contribute and do things. And, um, you know, hopefully that's paying off for us. And um, guys appreciate it. And I think they grow and develop here. And, you know, Giannis and Chris and, and Bled, they do a great job of empowering their teammates, trusting their teammates, and letting their teammates play. Um, and it's, it's what they've done all year, and uh, we need it to continue. Coach Peter Bukowski, Dime Magazine. Uh, you said after game one, you weren't going to change the way that you played in the playoffs. You wanted the guys to keep shooting, to keep playing the way that, that you want them to play. In the playoffs, though, usually we see rotation shorten, we see more isolation basketball, and you haven't done that. Does a game like tonight give you confidence that that approach is the right approach and can work in these big games? 
Well, I mean, you know, we're going to lose some games and we're going to keep doing what we've, what we've been doing all year. It's like I, you can't just base it on, um, you know, the results. Obviously, tonight was a huge positive. Uh, the guys have learned a way to play. Um, they believe in it. We believe in it. And, um, you know, the more positive results you get, sure, it reinforces it. It just, um, you know, lets them know that nothing's going to change. And, you know, I think uh, we'll just continue that going into game three, win or lose, you know, going into game four. It's, it's uh, everybody's built their habits. Everybody, to some degree, is who they are. Um, now you just got to go out and execute and do what you've been doing. Two more. We got Dan and then Jeff. But uh, Dan went with the Los Angeles Times. You know, on a night when Giannis has 30 and 17, I'm, I'm sure there were some shots he'd like back and some passes maybe he'd like back. What's it like to coach a guy where 30 and 17 is like a, a good night, but, you know, there's more there still? Yeah, it's uh, – I'm beyond fortunate to uh, have Giannis. And, you know, I it, it's – how you describe it is true. You know, you, he, he's incredible. And then you're like, wow, I think he can be even better. And the great part about Giannis is he wants to be better. And, you know, we're coaching him and we're on him and we think he can be doing more. And um, he just soaks it up. And uh, it's just so unique to have a player like that that um, just wants to be great and, and, and you feel like has more. And, and yet he's been phenomenal. And so, um, you know, it's exciting for us, you know, for tonight and going forward. And, uh, you, know, you can't say enough good things about Giannis. Jeff Zogi at USA Today. I I'm back here, but yeah, Jeff. Uh, there, you mentioned the third quarter. Uh, what's the challenge headed into game three? They can't afford to go down 3-0. So, you, you know, from your vantage point, what you guys need to guard against, what is that challenge? Yeah, you know, in a strange way, I think looking at third quarter tonight to see – you know, how they end up with 39 points, that's just, you know, that's a huge quarter. And uh, where did we break down? Where were we not as good as we need to be? And, you know, hopefully that'll give us, you know, a little bit of a roadmap to what to expect in game three. And, um, you know, we're always looking for ways to get better. And um, we want to stay hungry. We want to go out there and, um, you know, continue to just focus on our defense, make that our identity and, um, you know, see what happens in game three.